Hi there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of tiny and unique homes and showcase stories of people living alternatively. In today's video, we're meeting a pilot who has a very unconventional home, but it's also very on brand. I'm a pilot for Southwest Airlines and how cool would it be to actually buy a Southwest Airlines truck and live in it? Mark is gonna take us on a tour of his airline scissor jack style box truck tiny home, which has gotta be one of the coolest homes we've ever featured on this channel. And if you like these kind of videos, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time we publish a new tour. Hi, I'm Mark, and I'm happy to show you my tiny house on wheels, a snack pack. What I used to think was happiness is going to work, making a lot of money and buying things. I was a fighter pilot and a special operations pilot. Once I retired, I got a job with Southwest Airlines. The biggest turn point for me was when COVID happened and they said, hey, we just don't need pilots anymore. From that day on, I went, you know what? If one incident of a virus is gonna shut down the entire world, maybe I need to think of alternatives. I always wanted to live in a box truck or a provisioning truck. At work, I deal with these trucks every day because they pull up to the airplane when the passengers get off, we refuel. And how cool would it be to actually buy a Southwest Airlines truck and live in it? You haven't seen one of these on the road, but it's pretty funny looking. To see one of these things going 70 miles an hour down the interstate. <laughs> I won this truck on an auction, and there was only one other guy bidding against me, and it was like 500, it went to 1,000. I said, okay, I'm just gonna put in the maximum bid, 3,300 bucks. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. I'm like, no, oh my God, I just won a truck for, I can't even, I can't even buy tires for that much money. The build process took me seven months. I knew what I wanted to do, I had a plan, and I was just ready to execute. Cleaned it all up, got all the dirt out, I dove right into it. The total cost for the build was right around 30K, and that includes the truck. I've been in the rig for two years and a month. So this is a 2000 Ford 650, and it is a uh, Southwest Airlines provisioning truck. Total overall length is about 28, 29 feet, 25,000 pounds. It's got a 5.9 liter Cummins diesel 24 valve. When I'm pulling my 2018 Toyota Tacoma, I get about five miles to the gallon. When I'm not pulling it, it's roughly about eight miles to the gallon. I started out white, and I painted it fighter gray since I used to fly fighters in the Air Force. Decided to make it kind of look more like an aircraft. So I airbrushed on some little rivets and the access panel. My call sign Spanky in the Air Force when I flew F-16s. Um, I also have up top the silhouettes of all the jets that I flew in the Air Force. And uh, one of the remaining paraphernalia that I have from one of my squadrons, the uh, Fireball Squadron. If you look up here, you'll see the box here is a 14 foot box roughly uh, 10 and a half feet tall on the leeward side and about nine feet on this side. Imagine when you're at the airport, you see these trucks will pull up to the jets and they'll uh, service. So they'll raise up and pull up the front deck to the exterior doors and they'll resupply ice and beer and snacks, etc. Kind of wanted to keep it as original as I could just so people would know. One of the unique things about a uh, provisioning truck is that it's got a high lift jack on it. It goes up approximately 17 feet. This was original with a truck here. This is an emergency shutoff for the hydraulic system. And uh, this is the reservoir for the hydraulic fluid. As you can see, the scissor lift here, it's got two big rams, just like you see on a dump truck. It's a two stage. Again, it goes up about 17 feet total. And uh, really it's just a novelty kind of thing. I mean, who has a tiny house that goes up in the air 17 feet? Always have a view. I've got a black tank here. This is a five gallon. This is for my recirculating shower. I've got a system where I can either do a normal shower pulling from my freshwater tank or I can flip a switch and I can have it pull out of this tank. So it's recirculating going through uh, a series of filters and a UV light in order to maintain, keep the same uh, water so I can use it over and over and over, recycled water. 
So on the driver's side, a couple features I'd like to point out. I've got a shore power hookup here, so whenever I pull into an RV park, I can plug in a 30 amp, 50 amp, as well as uh, added a gen set here, uh, 4,500 watts. This was originally on the truck. I'm using it for a sink water gray tank. The white box here is the, the compressor for the mini split. I've got an accu level here so that I know when the truck is level. I built a mountain bike rack here so that I can work on my mountain bike. The bike comes off, I haul the bike on the back of my Tacoma and the arm swings in so I don't take out mailboxes. For the top, this is where I extended it up roughly about two feet. One of my neighbors was getting rid of a bunch of skis and uh, while I was sleeping, I was thinking, oh, that'd be cool. I could put some skis and then uh, encircle those around some windows. So I've got the windows in the middle of the skis. I've also got a security system up top in the front and the back, motion cameras with a security and an alarm system. On the roof, I installed three solar panels. They're LG solar panels. They're almost 400 watts a piece. It gives me a total of 1200 watts. I decided to go with a uh, single slant roof in order to have a water harvesting system put a gutter on one side and then into my tank and then that goes through a house filter so I can drink rainwater. This is the primary entrance. Uh, here's my little uh, doorbell. So here's how we get up. I've got an outdoor shower. This is the shower platform that also goes up when I'm driving. A little climbing holds here in order to get up on the roof. On the door here, I've got an ice axe for the handle. All right, let's head inside. All right, here's the kitchen area. A ton of stuff going on here. I used some live edge here for the, uh, the counter. I've got a kerosene uh, cooktop stove here. The reason I decided to go with this is because uh, this stove in particular, as well as the hydronic heater, they pretty much sip kerosene. And uh, it, currently right now I'm up to 10 and a half months on uh, 20 gallons. Bean cutter for my coffee, espresso maker. I'm a big coffee drinker. One of the priorities was to have a very nice espresso machine. So voila, from Germany comes the ECM. For the kitchen layout, a lot of magnets are involved. So everything pretty much stays put how you see it up here. I've got these holes that are uh, drilled out for the uh, glasses. And then for the coffee cups, I have magnets and they stay in place. Same here. Um, the plates, there's a magnet on, on these little uh, stanchions here that go up. So only two, try to keep it simple, kind of a minimalist. I've got three uh, ropes that come across here. Those hook over here on these three eyelets and then I just pull those tight with a, a taut line knot and that holds everything that's on the top shelf. For the refrigerator and the freezer, this was from a yacht store. So they, they put these on boats. Isotherm, it's a, a 6.9 cubic foot. So I have plenty of space in here. It just, it's just so homey to have. The first summer that I lived in the snack pack, I didn't have a air conditioner. I was up in Montana, they had a heat wave, it was 105. And so I told myself the next summer I was going to have a air conditioner. This is a DC operated 6000 BTU mini split air conditioner. Uh, it works fantastic and when I have it on during the day uh, when the sun's out, it, it doesn't, my batteries don't go down at all. Uh, so I can run this thing all day and it keeps it really, really cool in here. Let's check out the bedroom. A lot of people ask, how do I get up to my bed? I just use uh, one of these telescoping uh, ladders and it works really well. So, one up. For the bedroom, I have a queen size mattress. It's a Tempur-Pedic. It was a California King originally. I basically took a filet knife and cut it to fit up here. Uh, so now it's a queen size. I decided to go with a, uh, a three foot by three foot skylight that's got automatic uh, blinds. So you can see it's going up there as well as an automatic uh, opener and it opens up. It's gonna open up now. It's got a screen. I can take the screen off uh, when the bugs aren't an issue and I can put it uh, down here. I've located a spot where I can put it up and I can watch the stars uh, screen free, which is pretty nice. But it also gives me extra headroom. So when I sit up, I've actually got plenty of room in here uh, to move around. 
I've got an iPad up here that I can adjust with a RAM mount that I can watch uh, Netflix or if I want to bid on trips for work or try to pick up trips for work. You can see I've got a little place for all my remotes that I can actually watch my movies on the big screen uh, with a projector. For the windows, I didn't want to go with glass or buy any kind of specialty windows. It was going to cost way too much money, so I decided to go with a, a half-inch acrylic kind of a plexiglass. And uh, basically, I just framed those in there, and I wanted them around the bed area so that whenever I'm parked like uh, with just magnificent views or rivers or mountains, I could just wake up in the morning, open those up, and, and have it just right there. I've got three that go down to let in uh, lots of ambient light uh, so I can see in here. It's super nice. These are just homemade blinds that are uh, held up with a little magnet and uh, just kind of simple. Okay, let's check out under the hood, if you will. So uh, under this, I try to keep it simple with just a, a blind that I could just drop or whatever because uh, I want to keep it functional. Functionality is really what the key is here. But you come underneath, you see I have some shelves and basically just some canned foods, etc. And then I've got a, a little vacuum cleaner that's rechargeable and it's got a little stand in here as well. In the back corner I've got a, a hydronic heater that is used for uh, heating the floor, so radiant heated floors. I've got a heat exchanger for my recirculating shower that it heats up the water so it's like a tankless water heater, instantaneous. It also uh, heats the, um, I've got a four gallon water heater that stores the hot water in it. It will typically last about 24 hours of hot water, which is pretty nice if I want to store that. For the electrical system, everything back here, uh, all the wires and all the different uh, connectors I built uh, homemade from scratch. I did have some help on uh, YouTube. I went with a uh, Victron system. Um, yes, it is kind of a, a higher dollar system, but I basically wanted to build it and not have to worry about it. And that's pretty much how it's been the entire time. I've got 600 amp hours, so these are lithium ion batteries, they're 300 amp hours a piece. Most everything in the rig is DC, so that was one of the priorities is that whatever I was going to put in here, I was going to make sure it was DC in order to conserve electricity. This is a Peplink uh, 5G capable uh, cellular modem, which is very nice. I know it's old school, I should go with Starlink, but you know, hey, guess what? This is what I have. For the radios, I wanted to uh, kind of be apocalyptic ready. I wanted to make sure that I had communication, so I went with a, I've got a ham radio, it's an ICOM, about a 200 foot antenna that I can put up with my 30 foot flagpole. I've heard uh, the UK, I've heard people in Asia, and I've heard uh, Central America, so I, I can pretty much talk and hear people everywhere around the world. Okay, let's move over here to this side. I decided to go with just some cubbies, so just, just basic shelves. So I got, you know, wires, uh, toiletries, etc. Up here is a, a little mini bar that I had with a little bit of decoration from uh, the F-16 throttle and uh, the stick. Above the mini bar, I built some cubbies out of this very nice closet finished cedar. It smells really good, so I just have everything folded up in here. It doesn't fall out, it stays in there uh, as long as it's packed. One of the other priorities that I wanted in my uh, tiny house was to have a, a nice little wood stove. So this is one of the smaller ones that uh, dwarf stoves make. Kind of pricey, but something that I wanted. It was, a, it was a must. So this thing right here, I can basically get about this much wood, put it in there, a little bit of paper, get it going, fire it up, open all the air vents, and then uh, let it get up. It gets up to like 500 degrees. The fan is heat controlled, so this thing heats up, and I just kind of point it where it's chilly. And then uh, this is all homemade. I've got a background in uh, plasma cutting and welding, and so this is all just some kind of metal art that I created for the heat shield. I had some extra wood left over, and um, I wanted a map I also had uh, these rocks here, and the story behind these rocks is I've had these for about 20 years. I started kind of a little challenge with my kids when they were little that we were going to go to the highest point in, in all the 50 states. And so I kept up with all these rocks over the years in little Ziploc bags and put little Sharpie, the dates and whatever peak that we climbed. And so we would climb up and we would snag a rock from the top and bring it down. So essentially these are all the, uh, these are all the high points in the 50 states. For toilet uh, decision, I decided to go with a composting toilet. I didn't want to deal with a cassette toilet and the black tank. I just didn't want to deal with all that. This thing here, 
it's been a lifesaver. This thing's money. I go about four months. It is so nice. Highly recommend. The other important component that I wanted in here was a very nice shower. Most RVs, the showers they have are about this big. It's a locker. I didn't really feel like taking a shower in a locker. Uh, so I went with a, this is an in-home uh, corner style, frameless tempered glass shower. I was a little worried initially when I installed it just because I didn't know what, it, what would happen to it going down a dirt road. So far, so good. It's, uh, it's been working fabulous. It's got a pull uh, string to turn it on. It's a manual uh, mixture control valve that adjusts the temperature so that I don't have to deal with a bunch of knobs on the inside. I uh, future-proofed it by making leaving room for a uh, recirculating shower. Currently, right now, I can go roughly about five weeks on uh, 55 gallons of water. I changed the diverter drain that goes into a five-gallon tank and then uh, flip a switch, and that uh, allows the recirculating shower to come through the shower head now as opposed to the uh, fresh water. But essentially what it does is it goes through a big strainer uh, like a 50 micron strainer into the pump and then it goes through three uh, separate filters through a UV light and then uh, a heat exchanger to heat up the water and then comes out. Over here I've got uh, a little closet here where I keep all my jackets and uh, keep my uniforms. Uh, I'll actually be putting this on uh, tomorrow but this is my, uh, my work uniform. Uh, I've got a little flight coming up. Gloves, hats, and any kind of winter apparel that I need or uh, my pads for down, downhill mountain biking. As well as the uh, the snacks are on me is where that comes from. Put my vegetables in my little hammock over here. Well, can I have some peanuts? Of course you can have peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> And welcome to the front deck. This is uh, one of the main places that I come out here to relax, enjoy, and cook. I have uh, AstroTurf out here, I've got grass. I built a little table out here, kind of like a lazy Susan. Goes up and down and I can use it to uh, help aid me in cooking or uh, you can eat out here standing up or sitting down. I've got a Traeger uh, grill over here. It's a 575 series. It's welded out here on a little platform that I welded up. I've got outdoor speakers. You can see the uh, weather station over here to the left is a uh, rain catcher, so that tells me uh, how much rain I've got. This is my chill zone. This is where I come out here to relax, take in nature, watch the birds fly, watch the animals. Uh, when I was in the Tetons, I would watch the, uh, the bison migrate across the field. It's just really nice to come out here and sit. I can sit out here for hours. This is heaven. I'm just, I'm in heaven right now. I'm waking up in my bed in the middle of nowhere and I hear the wind blowing. I'm gonna make some coffee and I'm gonna go sit out on my deck and I'm just gonna enjoy just looking out, just enjoying everything. The feeling of waking up and not having anywhere to be and no stress is the most liberating thing in the world. Thanks for watching this week's video. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you soon with another unique home tour.